Welcome to Get Wed, a podcast to plan your wedding by. I'm Katie. And I'm Kerry. And we're both here as professional photographers and brides-to-be to help you plan your big day. Each week we'll discuss a topic that you encounter along your wedding planning journey. And with the help of fellow industry experts, we'll navigate this crazy wedding world together. together. Welcome back to Get Wet everyone. Today I have another solo episode for you with just my voice. It's Kerry here. Um, because Katie is obviously still away on her maternity leave. So in between our guest episodes, I'm trying to kind of squeeze in a little um, solo show for you with just me. So I hope it's not too boring. I apologise in advance. But this week, I thought I would approach this episode from the um, point of view of a wedding supplier rather than that of a bride-to-be. Um, and through this episode, I've decided that I'm going to share with you eight things that I wish brides and grooms, in fact, knew before their wedding day. There's a few things that um, you might find surprising, a few things that you might find really useful, but hopefully, I hope that by listening to this week's episode, you actually just can take some of these, some of the advice on board and just make yourself a much smoother wedding planning process. So let's dive in. Um, first of all, my first tip, or my first point that I wish brides knew before their wedding day, and grooms as well, actually, is that you should choose, although with your wedding party, you should choose your nearest and dearest, closest friends, etc., etc. You should always, you should also try to choose um, some attent- the most attentive and helpful bridesmaids and groomsmen that you can. There's nothing worse than turning up on a wedding day and finding out that your bridesmaids or your groomsmen have never done that job before, and your ushers, because they will literally be no help to your photographer. And this is a really selfish uh, point here. But there's points of the day where we really need to call on people to help us out with things. It might be um, helping us find certain members of the wedding party for group photos. Um, It might be um, giving them a job such as taking over buttonholes and things like that that need to be given to the groomsmen. There's all sorts of small jobs like that, that um, if your bridesmaids and groomsmen have and ushers have done that job before, they'll be able to preempt a, pre- pre-empt a situation and um, kind of um, sort it out before you have to deal with it. And it can be all sorts of small things from helping you put on your wedding shoes, um, it can be um, calling around um, suppliers if something hasn't gone to plan, something hasn't turned up, etc. Um, it could just be simple things like answering the door to um, suppliers as they're turning up and even helping you out at the venue, um, like lighting candles, um, liaising with the DJ and, and things like that. If you've got some really helpful bridesmaids and groomsmen, they'll know what to do. And it also helps for the start of the ceremony too. If your ushers have kind of done that job before, they'll know that they need to hand out the order of services, direct people to seats, etc., etc. And they'll be on hand to answer um, any questions from your guests as well. So choose your most attentive and helpful bridesmaids and groomsmen. But of course, they still need to be your nearest and dearest too. My second point that I wish all brides knew before their wedding day was that your wedding dress is going to get dirty. No matter how careful and precious you are about that dress, it is going to get dirty. And rather than spending your entire day worrying about it, you just need to let it go. I totally get this because your wedding dress is probably going to be one of the most expensive purchases you're ever going to make on your wedding day. I know for me it was a pretty big expense and you can hear all about that in the wedding spending remorse episode that we recorded back um, a, a couple of seasons ago. Um, that dress, although it's absolutely gorgeous, it's not going to look the same way the day after the wedding. And the thing is, you're never ever going to need to wear that dress again, so why not just have loads of fun in it, um, rather than worrying about trying to keep it clean. Um, in particular, your dress will get dirtier in the winter and during bad weather. So if it's going to be a rainy day or you're getting married kind of from kind of end of September through to kind of March time, chances are the ground's going to be wet. Um, you're going to be dragging your dress, it's going to capture lots of dirt and all sorts of things, Um, but just try not to let it worry you. The worst situations I find is that when brides are so precious about a dress that they just refuse to put it down on the ground, and although I kind of get that and it means that, you know, your dress is going to be pristine after your wedding day, um, it's not going to do much for your photos because you're going to be holding onto your dress throughout all your photos. Um, You want to have situations where you can lay it on the ground, and have those gorgeous shots of how your dress should look. You know, that's the reason you bought it, is for that amazing silhouette. Um, and after your ceremony's done, really, there's not really any need for your dress to be pristine anymore. Just let it go. I promise you, you will love your photos more if you are just a little less precious about your dress. Um, you don't want to look back and think, oh, I wish I was been hoiking that train around all day. You know, I wish I'd just let my dress go. There's nothing worse than being in a situation where you just haven't been able to enjoy yourself because you've been too worried about how dirty it's going to get. 
Whilst we're talking about the dress, actually, I thought I'd ask and um, mention a few other, other points as well. You should always try to sit down in your dress before your wedding day. I have so many situations where the bride has been to the wedding shop and they've tried on their dress and, you know, they've kind of moved around the front of the mirror and it looks lovely. Um, but then when they come to sit down for dinner, um, especially in corseted dresses where there's boning, um, they can find it really uncomfortable. So you want to try out all sorts of positions when you're trying on your dress, sit down in it, crouch down in it walk around in it as well because sometimes having a long train behind you can be really really annoying so make sure all these things that all the all the reasons that you love your dress are the right reasons you want to make sure that you know you're going to be comfortable in that dress all day long so have a few um trial runs in the dress just to make sure that you're happy with everything and again just try not to be too precious about it there's also situations where things might go wrong with your dress buttons might fall off and um, you might pull on the lace um, I've even seen leaves and twigs and all sorts caught up in trains whilst we've been doing photos. Um, confetti will fall in everywhere. It's just the way it's going to go. And you just need to kind of embrace it and realise this is all part of your wedding day. I heard about one bride once who um, got her dress so dirty, but actually she never ever w worried about getting it cleaned. To her, looking back at the dirt on her dress was like reliving all the memories and the amazing experiences she had on her wedding day from like climbing over fences to get for photos, you know, kind of running around with all the children, grass stains, etc. She just kind of saw it as like memories of her wedding day. So perhaps that's another way to look at it as well. I also thought I'd mention the veil whilst I'm on the dress as well. Veils are beautiful. They make incredible photos that we can kind of, you know, pull them up and let them go in the wind and pull them around your faces and stuff. They can make them really, really gorgeous photos. But I promise you, your veil is going to get very annoying very quickly. Um, your guests will kind of wrap their arms around you when they come to congratulate you, which will pull your veil back in your hair. Um, the wind will be carrying it. Um, and if it's a very long train uh, veil, you know, people might stand on it, etc. So you might not want to wear it all day long, and that's absolutely fine. The majority of brides I find tend to put their veil in for their ceremony and perhaps take it out after their kind of formal group photos, and then they can spend the rest of the day without worrying about their head being pulled around from this veil. Um, but I just wanted to mention it because it does get very irritating and I wish lots of brides knew that before the wedding day. On to point number three. Trusting your wedding team is really, really vital. And by team, I mean all the suppliers that you have decided to book for your wedding day. So from your um, venue owners right up to your photographer, your, um, your celebrant or your re vicar, registrar, um, right through to your catering team, your DJ, Anybody that's involved in your wedding day, you just need to trust them 100%. We've all, we're all in these jobs because we love our jobs. And chances are we've all got years and years of experience behind us. So we really know how to make your wedding day the best day ever. We've been there before, we've dealt with all kinds of situations and we know what's right and how to make your day amazing. If you start to kind of micromanage your wedding suppliers, that's where things can start to go wrong because we're trying to um, kind of do our job as well as we know how to do it that when we start getting instructions on how to do things differently or to change things up, sometimes that can be a bit difficult to kind of still give you the exact same experience as you were booking because you're trying to change how we might work. Um, now, you know, m most brides don't do this at all, but I just wanted to kind of put this out there as a point. Um, we've been to so many weddings. We really, really know what we're doing and um, we're here to make your day amazing. So you just need to really kind of hand over your trust and let things go. This can be really important in situations as um, your venue, for example. So your venue team um, have obviously been working at their venue for many years. They've got a whole host of staff on hand to help out of all the situations that could go awry on the day. So a really great way of um, really handing off some responsibility is for setting up your venue, for example. If you let your uh, venue coordinator know exactly how it is that you want your tables decorated, for example, there's no need for you to be up there on the day of your wedding stressing out about trying to get everything done in such a small space of time. Hand off things like that and delegate so that your team can kind of take over and do the job that they've been trained to do. That's what they're there for after all and that is what you're paying them for. So really, really trust that they know exactly what they're doing and they can do it easily without any worries. From a photographer's point of view, um, trusting your team again is really, really vital. Um, in particular, I find that... Um, this can sometimes come across when brides are handing over really big long shot lists of things. And usually it's something they found in a, in a wedding magazine and they feel like they need to let their photographer know about it. But it will cover all sorts of really um, obvious things. So for example, I don't need to know that I need to photograph your first kiss. That's quite an obvious one. 
Um, but then it can also contain things that um, might not naturally happen on a wedding day. So I've had lists before that say, bride looking in mirror longingly <laughs> whilst getting ready. And I'm like, well, we're going to have to set that up unless you're naturally doing that. Um, I've had it before where I've had things like dad looking at bride as she puts earrings in. It's like, well, if your dad's not there when you're about to do your earrings, you know, I can't guarantee I'm going to get that shot. And it's all come about from Pinterest. It's come about from these kind of checklists in magazines. Um, if you hand over a shot list to your photographer, they're going to spend the entire day ticking things off this list and they won't have any time to just be creative and capture the day naturally as they would have done normally. Um, you're much better just letting your photographer capture your wedding day and how your wedding day is unfolding rather than handing them over a shot list or Pinterest examples of another wedding day. Um, you don't want to recreate someone else's wedding day. You want your wedding day to be what your photographer is capturing and creating the memories from. So be careful with shot lists. Um, we totally get that you need group photos and things like that. We And we need those to make those go smoothly, as you've heard in previous episodes. Um, but just try not to be too overbearing with the other group shots um, and just trust your photographer to capture the natural moments and the things that you're going to you're going to cherish and um, love to look back on naturally. Point number four might surprise you, but I guarantee that it's probably true for almost of your, all of your suppliers. We get nervous too, and um, this is no this is so true because I still get really really nervous before every single wedding I shoot. Let's say now that I'm kind of into year seven of my uh, wedding photography journey, but definitely more so at the beginning. Um, there's so much pressure on a wedding day and you can only do it once so anyone who didn't get nervous um, is probably lying and it's not like a bad nerve it's not like a nerve where you're kind of like oh my god I don't want to do it it's nerve it's like an excitement nerve um, we're all so invested in your wedding day and so excited to be a part of it um, we love our jobs that's why we do what we do and so for us to not get nervous would be a bit weird um, I think nerves on a wedding day for your supplies is a sign of them really really caring about um, what they do um, and really really loving their jobs. Um, I think if your suppliers don't get nervous perhaps they're becoming a little bit complacent in their work and then they need to start worrying. Um, for me in particular I know that I get nervous and it's a good sign it means I really care about what I'm doing and I care about my couples um, and I think I'd start to worry if that disappeared but you know those nerves um, are still kind of difficult to handle. Some suppliers I know of um, have got really big kind of rituals around the night before a wedding when they've got to work. You know, they won't eat certain things in case it makes them ill. They won't go to certain places in case they can't get back. Um, you know, I even still, I still um, occasionally have wedding nightmares where I'm asleep and I'm trying to get to a wedding and I can't get there. It's like this weird anxious dream that I sometimes get every so often. And I'm sure I'm not alone. Um, most suppliers, I'm sure, face these issues. Um, I get nervous about all sorts of things all the time that um, I just can't let go of but I think it just shows that I really really care about my job. Um, from the bride's point of view obviously you get nervous for completely different reasons. You're getting nervous because you're going to be walking up the aisle in front of everyone um, everyone's going to be there to kind of see your dress, see how you react, um, hear your speeches and um, be a part of your day like that and that can be really nervous but your suppliers on the other side are there because are getting nervous because they want the day to go really smoothly, make sure nothing goes wrong or awry. And so that's where our nerves kind of step in for that situation. I have noticed that I've become less nervous about um, working at weddings now that I am married. And I think it's because I really relate to being the bride now. And on the wedding day itself, I wasn't worried about any of my suppliers. I had no time to be nervous about that. I was just more focused on you know the times and everything that was happening and so I've kind of from that experience learned that actually I shouldn't be as nervous as I perhaps am because the bride is not thinking about I mean I can't go for the green because obviously I don't know what Russell was thinking but um from a bride's point of view I literally had stopped caring not caring about my surprise but kept like worrying about whether they were going to be there and what they were going to do because you get to a point on your wedding day where you're just like okay I'm going to deal with everything now or well, there's nothing I can do to change the situation. It's just happening and this is going ahead. So um, yeah, I think I've got to a point now where although the nerves are still there, they're less, um, they're not as big as they used to be and I've got them under control a lot more. But your wedding, your wedding supplies will get very nervous about their job and it just shows that they care. So don't forget that. Uh, point number five is a bit of a personal one and um, it's not going to apply to all of you, but being indecisive can be as bad as being controlling on your wedding day. Um, I'm a really indecisive person in my personal life. I and I'm a 
indecisive because I'm a bit of a people pleaser. Um, I'm scared of upsetting people or, um, you know, p- people getting annoyed at me. So sometimes that turns into a bit of indecisiveness around certain things. So um, an example of where indecisiveness can be bad is that um, sometimes people just need direction for things. So this is quite um, apparent sometimes in situations where um, you might be really chilled out about your wedding day and like you don't care what your bridesmaids are going to do with their hair or their makeup, for example. Um, I felt like that. I had no kind of quarrels about what they did with their hair and how they had their makeup. But um, I know from their point of view, they probably would have liked a bit more guidance, um, which is fine. I totally get it. But I literally just didn't care. <laughs> and sometimes that can kind of make make your plans uh, go a little less smoother because the decisions haven't been made um, or they haven't been made as quickly as they should have been. So sometimes you just need to kind of um, get yourself in a decisive mood, make decisions here, there and everywhere. It can get really hard because I know in the lead up to the wedding day, um, you kind of get decision fatigue. And we spoke about this again in, a, in another episode about dealing with wedding an- anxiety um, in a couple of, pre- um, I think it was last season or season before. Um, you just get to a point where you're making so many de- decisions and booking so many things that you get to a point where you're just like, I just don't want to make another decision. I'm a, I got this very much so around um, the band situation. We kept going around to look at bands and um, I just got quite fed up of it all and just wanted to get it done and over with. Um, and so kind of being indecisive around things can be a hindrance to yourself because it can just really make you really fed up with all the decisions that you need to make. If you've met with a supplier and you're like, yep, I like them, I'm confident in what they do, just book them. If you're happy with it, just go ahead. There's no reason that you have to see so many suppliers if you found someone you're really happy with, then just go for that. Um, it can be really, um, it can make the day go a lot smoother than if you were to kind of, you know, carry on the indecision for a long, long time and just annoy people, which is what I try to avoid to do. Um, being controlling on the wind day as well is um, just as bad as being indecisive, as I mentioned. Um, but kind of controlling and micromanaging again goes back to my earlier point where. Um, you just need to trust your team your team know exactly what they're going to do so if you over control things or micromanage it just means that they're going to make they're not they're not going to do their job to the best of their abilities and um, sometimes you just want things to happen naturally and unfold as you go because that's the way um, that's where all the memories are made and the things you're going to look back on and love happen so try not to be too indecisive but don't be too controlling you want to get somewhere in the middle Uh, point number six People won't dance unless you do. I've had had a few couples before in the past who said that they don't want to have a first dance. Um, I get that. It's a really scary thing to be standing up in front of all um, your friends and family and have them all stare at you again on your wedding day. Um, But generally, your dance floor will stay very empty until you've got up and done your dance. Um, And you don't have to do your first dance completely on your own. You can start off on your own, then call everyone in after like 30 seconds. Um, You can tell your DJ that's how you want it to go as well. But I guarantee that until you've got up on that dance floor, your guests won't come in and dance. And so if you want to have lots of party photos and things like that, you need to make sure that you're kind of up there and you're dancing. And also try not to kind of do your first dance and wander off straight away afterwards. Stick around on the dance floor for four or five songs. Get your guests up as well, because if you kind of wander off, then your guests are also going to just go to the bar or go and find the evening food. You just really, really need to stay on the dance floor for a little while to kind of get the party atmosphere going. Um, Also, if you kind of delay your first dance for too long, it delays your party. So you want to make sure you kind of get that done fairly soon after your evening guests arrive so that the party can kick off and then it can get going. And then that's all of your um, kind of jobs for the day done once you've got your first dance finished. So just kind of jump in there, get it done, enjoy yourselves. And we promise you that all your guests will be up and dancing straight away too. And your DJ or your band will also be very thankful. Um, I always feel for bands, especially, who are playing away and they've got no one on the dance floor. I always think, you know, that's a bit sad for them. So make sure you've got some guests up there dancing, enjoying the music and um, keeping the party atmosphere going. So it can kind of be your last job to make sure you're making sure your guests are having fun and enjoying themselves. Point number seven is that all the little details in your wedding day really won't matter. Now, as a DIY bride myself, as you've probably heard if you've been listening to the podcast, um, I took on so many wedding projects um, to make the wedding day really unique to us. Um, what it did mean is that there were so many details that I was kind of stressing over and worrying about and really looking back now, none of that stuff really mattered. And it's the little things like um, we ironed the tea towels that we used as napkins on the wedding day, which took us absolutely ages, um, but I'm sure no one noticed. <laughs> um, it's like the way I wanted the tables laid out, as soon as people sat down they were messy anyway. Um, 
it's also little things that didn't happen on my wedding day that now I look back on and think, oh yeah, that didn't happen. But at the time it didn't matter. For example, I had these giant balloons that spelt out yum that I wanted to go up over my um, wedding cake table because we had a bake-off. Um, but I, had, I hadn't bought any helium um, in the lead up to the wedding because again, I was getting fed up of spending so much money on all these things. And so I kind of had in my head, perhaps they'll go up if they're able to just blow them up with normal air. But um, that never happened. But, you know, it's something that I didn't even notice until I looked back later in the day and thought, oh, yeah, that's not up. And those other balloons I bought aren't up. But you won't notice and your guests won't even know about those things. So to spend so much time stressing and worrying about things like that um, is really just a waste of your time. And you can really push your um, energy into something far more important rather than worrying about all the little details. This comes down to favours as well. So many people stress and worry about what kind of favours to give to their guests. And I really do think that favours, although they look lovely on the table and it's a nice little um, gift to give to people, they go a bit wasted because people tend to get up and dance in the evening. They won't, If it's something that they can't um, eat or drink, I find that they just get left behind and forgotten about. So try not to spend too much more money or and worry about those things because they're not something that people really care about all that much. Um, on our wedding day, I made up some little badges that people could pick and choose from out of a box and then they could put them on. It didn't cost me much money at all, um, but they went down quite well. People were trying to collect the whole set because I had six different designs. Um, but I didn't put them on everyone's places. Um, I just felt that it was a big waste of money and I didn't want to do it. <laughs> so don't be afraid to not do favours. I promise you that people won't notice. And if they do, they'll probably kind of mention it a few days later and you'll be like, yeah, I just couldn't be bothered. <laughs> But um, I just don't think it's something that you really need to worry about unless it's really important to you to make favours and um, stress about something like that in the lead up to the wedding day. Um, number eight is something that I hark on about all the time and I'm sure we're getting annoyed with me hearing about it. Uh, point eight is to master your timeline. Now we've done a whole episode about um, planning your wedding day timings which, you, which I'll link to in the show notes so you can go back and listen to that. But timing it really is so important on your wedding day. It's um, it's kind of like a make or break situation. If some part of your day is delayed, it has a knock-on effect for the entire rest of the day. So you need to make sure that you're kind of aware of how long you have to spend on certain things throughout the day. Parts of the day where your timeline can go astray are for things like if you have a receiving line. So this is a line where you and your parents, sometimes your bridal party, will all be stood in a line um, at the entrance to the reception so that you're um, just before your guests are going to be sat down for dinner and then your guests come along the line they talk to every single person and then they go in and sit down now in theory this is a really lovely idea because it means that you get to meet all of your guests you get to introduce your parents to your friends uh, perhaps some there's some guests there that your partner knows but you don't perhaps they work with them and you've not met them before so it's a really nice way to introduce all your guests to each other um, but it can take a really long time so if you're going to do a receiving line you need to make sure that you're kind of moving the conversation on quickly and you're not keeping people held up for too long and this goes for all sorts of situations throughout the day people want to talk to you all day long because you just got married and it's really exciting and they want to congratulate you and they want to see your ring and they want to hear about you know how it was getting ready if you're going on your honeymoon and it's really lovely, of course, but you need to remember that there's all your guests there that you need to talk to. So perhaps you need to set a bit of a time limit of talking to people. I know when we were planning our wedding, um, Russell worked out that we'd need to spend, if we wanted to spend 10 minutes talking to every single person at our wedding day, we'd need like 24 hours or something to do it. So when you think about it in that context, you just really need to um, kind of rein it in slightly and just realise that in order to get around all your guests and make sure you're speaking to lots and lots of people, um, you're not kind of spending too much time with one set of people and there's still people on our wedding day that I think I really really didn't get time to talk to and it makes you feel awful but I think that it's really they do understand that they're there to be a part of your day but they don't necessarily need to be with you for the entire day um but still it's very polite to at least acknowledge people and say hello so just make sure you try and get around everyone you can do it during the tables um go around your tables at dinner and um, during your drinks reception but if you kind of plan out your time and fit in some buffer time um, you know, overextend things slightly to make sure you've got time to mingle and to chat, then um, you won't feel too stressed about things like that. But just be aware that your suppliers need to know your times in advance. And if you stick to them, your day should go smoothly and things won't be too delayed later on. Don't forget that knock-on effect will affect everything from sitting down to dinner, your first dance, your, your evening guests might arrive during your speeches, for example. So you just need to make sure that, especially earlier on in the day, that you're really sticking to those timings. So, you know, don't be late to your ceremony. That's an ideal place to start. So they are my eight tips that 
your wedding supplies wish you knew before your wedding day. I'm sure there's plenty more. So if there's any suppliers out there who have listened and there's things that you wish people had known before the day, just add them in the comments um, under our blog post here on on the website or come along and share your information on iTunes. Um, From a bride's point of view, there's one point that I would like to point out that there's something I wish we'd organised for the day after our wedding. And that is that I wish we had arranged a cleanup team. As I mentioned earlier, we had a bit of a DIY wedding, so we did everything ourselves. We had a marquee outside where we brought in all of our own suppliers. So we went up the next day to clean up and it was like a bombsite. So the day after your wedding, when you're in this kind of really exciting new marital bliss, you know, you're newlyweds and you're so excited and you're still reliving the day in your minds, turning up there and realising we had to take a trip to the bottle bank to get rid of hundreds and hundreds of bottles, um, bagging up all the rubbish that people left on the tables, picking up all the spilt drinks, um, tiling away all the chairs, uh, putting on the nap- all the tablecloths and things into bags ready for the linen people. You know, that was stressful. I wish now that we'd look back and we'd arranged a, set, a team of people, even paid someone to go in and do that part for us so that we could have just had a nice day spent together, really relaxing before we went off on our honeymoon. So that's my tip from a bride. <laughs> but the other eight tips are from supplies point of view. And I think that, I hope that you'll find them really, really helpful and um, just to give you something to think about whilst you're planning your wedding as well. So I hope you enjoy this week's episode and um, come along and join our Facebook group if you want to kind of carry on the conversation from this week and um, I will see you over there and I really hope you enjoy listening. Bye. Thanks for listening. We really hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Get Wed. Don't forget you can always subscribe to us on Apple Podcast and whilst you're there you may as well leave us a review. You can join us for more wedding chat in our Facebook group if you just can't wait until next week and you'll find all the links that you need via our website including show notes for this episode at www.getwebpodcast.co.uk. We'll see you next time. Happy planning!